Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for joining today. We wanted to seek the blessings of Radha Mata, Radha Shamsi, Krishna, Balgo, Gopakumas, and the assembled devotees, so that we continue with the um, <laughs> sessions on Sanat and Dharma. Today, we wanted to look at some scars, what they mean, why, what does it mean by some scar, what, what some scars are there, and are they relevant in today's age? So, Definition of samskaras this is the Vedic rites of passage, samskaras. They're not merely just formalities or social observances, but actually they're meant to purify the Atma at critical junctions in its life journey. So samskara means mental impressions. These are deeply rooted mental impressions. They are subtle impressions of our past actions. So sometimes we are prone to do certain things and even against our will, we do them. So these are actually some scars from the past uh, or, or impressions from the past. Some scars are those which are given through the Vedic traditions to guide us are uh, in the right direction. So those are positive samskars. Other mental impressions are from acts that we have performed in the past, um, which have left deep impressions in our minds. Actions that we perform with full consciousness are the ones that make the greatest impression on our mind. When we perform such an action, a certain impression is deposited in our mind's field. So it might be good, it might be bad. The samskars are meant to guide us on the spiritual path. They're good, very powerful, help us on our journey. Each time the action is repeated, the impression becomes stronger. This is how a habit is formed. The stronger the habit, the less mastery we have over our mind when we try to execute an action that is contrary to our habit pattern. So we, you know, somebody who likes to smoke, you know, they've smoked for so long, to change that habit becomes very, very difficult because the impression in their mind is very strong from all of the past um, smoking that they've done. Very difficult to change. The samskar ceremonies help create a favorable mentality for stepping positively from one phase of life to into the next. Samskars are considered essential for the three varnas, especially the Vaishudra, Vaisha, uh, so the Brahman, uh, Kshatriya, and uh, Vaish twice born. That twice born means they are born first from the womb of the mother and then second birth is thanks to the grace of the guru. And neglect of any ritual might render a me member fallen from his status. So generally these samskars were uh, regarded that they should be done. Although some traditions mention 10 rites of passage, or up to 16, or occasionally even more. Only five are currently popular. So what are these five? Garbadhan Sangsa. This is pre-conception so procedure. So before one has a child, the couple will go through this Garbadhan Sangsar. Next is Jatakarma Sangsa, which is um, done at the time of birth. Upanaya samskar, which is initiation, the sacred thread ceremony. Viva samskar and an antyashti samskar. Antim samskar, which is the funeral or rites of the dead. Those are the, generally the five most important. So we'll have a quick look at those preconception procedures. So, um, significantly, the first samskara is called purification of the womb, garbhoda, 
Garbatan. Garba is the, um, yes, like a womb, birthplace. Begins prior to conception. Before conception takes place, this samskar is meant to be performed. It aims at sanctifying the consciousness of both the wife and the husband before they beget a child. It's not just a sexual union. It's much, much more. Um, and the purification of the mind takes place if one does this Garbhadan Saksamsa. Scripture explains that the type of soul that enters the womb is largely determined by the mental states of both husband and wife. So this is a very interesting. The, the mental state of husband wife determines the type of soul who will enter. Who will enter. A notion graphically illustrated in the Mahabharata by the example of Dattarashtra, Pandu, and Vidur. So the situation happened that <clears throat> there was no heir to the throne at Kurukshetra, at uh, Hastinapur. And Mother Satyavati was in deep anxiety. She called upon one of her sons, who is Vyaste. She began that son before marriage. And Vyaste was summoned by the mother. And she told him, we have a problem. We need a hair, but um, Vichitavedya has died. And there are two queens that I would like you to impregnate. Um, sorry, I have to disturb you. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Uh, whatever you are reading, it's not coming on the oh, screen. Okay. Oh, really? Hang on. I can't see anything. It's just uh, a blank. These questions. Sorry. We can see it. I can oh, see yeah. it. Uh, it's, uh, maybe it's just you, uh, um, uh, Prabhupada. You can. Uh, Go out and then come back in. Okay. It's yeah. just, it says Garabadan pre concept ah, ah. so that's, that's it. it is. Yeah, that's where we are. That's where there we you are. are. Okay, that's okay. fine. Oh, I see. Yeah. So what happened is that at that time, <coughs> Vyastev, although he was uh, a sage, he agreed to his mother's request. So first, uh, I think Amba, Ambika, maybe Ambika came, he went to Ambika to impregnate her, but she was um, um, so scared because Vyastev looked, you know, he didn't uh, have, a, you know, he was a sage in the forest. So he hadn't washed, he had long hair. <laughs> so he looked a bit uh, frightening. So she closed her eyes. And when she closed her eyes, it happened that the baby was born blind. So then um, Vyastev went to the other queen, um, Amba, Ambika, Ambi, Ambalika, and she became so frightened, she became white with fright. So then Pandu was born completely pale. So then the Vyastev told his mother that this is what happened. So Vyastev was asked again, one more time, please, by Mother Satyavati. And this time he was meant to go to Ambika, but Ambika sent a maid instead. Now maid, she was very respectful. She knew the value of Vyastev, of this great sage. And from that union came Vidur, who was a very, very wise personality. So we can see how the mental state of the husband and the wife at the time of conception has an impact um, on the soul that enters the body of the baby. The soul takes shelter within the semen of a father, which is in injected within the mother of a uh, womb of a mother. And with the help of the mother's emulsified ovum, the soul grows a particular type of body. Okay, here's another example. The mind of Kashyap Muni was not in order 
when he conceived the two sons, Hiranyakshan and Hiranyakashipu. Therefore, the seemingly discharge was simultaneously extremely powerful and mixed with the quality of anger. This is when um, Diti approached him at the wrong time, at the wrong time. So his mood wasn't right. And who came out? The two terrible demons. While conceiving a child, one's mind must be very sober and devotional. So this is um, very interesting because um, the Vedic system is that you do this Karvadhan Sansa, which in involves a number of procedures. Um, one is that the couple will go on pilgrimage to the holy places so that they purify themselves of any, any sins. Um, another is that they would spend a day or a few days um, meditating, chanting on the holy names of the Lord. They would engage in um, giving donations to the Brahmins, to the Vaishnavas, to the temple. They would engage in seva um, to the temple, to the devotees. So in this way, their mental state is very clear, very keen. So this samskar is helping the new coming soul into a first class environment. So that's the why it's so important samskar. It's still observed. Um, not so widely perhaps, but it is still observed. Okay. Second samskar is Jatakarna. Um, the birth samskar. And this, uh, what happens is the following ceremony welcomes a baby into the world. The father places a small amount of ghee and honey on the baby's tongue and whispers the name of God in, in his ear. On the 11th day after birth, the parents celebrate the name giving ceremony, Nams, Namkaran. By dressing the baby in new clothes, the family astrologer announces the child's horoscope. Traditionally, the child's name is chosen according to the position of the moon in the birth. So this is the Rashi, according to Rashi. Songs and or bhajans, sometimes havan, fire sacrifice, accompany the rit rites, followed by the obligatory feast. <laughs> So this is name giving ceremony, very important. Even Krishna and Balaram had a name giving ceremony. The first outing, normally at five weeks. So usually one and a quarter months, uh, the, the child and also the mother don't actually leave the home. So the first outing takes place after that in the fifth week the child takes darshan of the sun. Then the temple deity and in the evening sees the moon. So we had recently a child who came to the temple or the mandir for the first visit outside of the home. And it's such a auspicious blessing when that happens. And we were very fortunate. We were able to uh, um, try to conduct some, some uh, ceremony for that child. And then there's the first grains. So for the first six months, usually, the child is not given grains. The reason being grains are um, quite heavy on the stomach and the child is delicate. So the first six months, the baby receives mother's milk. Then it may receive go mother's milk. It's given no grains for the first six months. And then a ceremony is done um, where we do the, uh, where we uh, offer, where we do a yagya and we offer the child, the priest offers the child some here or sweet rice. Uh, and that would be its first, and the priest will invite Lord Vishnu to enter 
the baby's stomach. <laughs> and so that the baby does not suffer any indigestion issues. So this is the Supreme, in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he explains that uh, he, is, uh, he is digesting the food. He is the fire of digestion within the stomach so that our food that we eat gets digested. So th at that time, the Lord is invited into the stomach by a qualified brahmin. And in this time also, sometimes we, we would check the tendency of, this, of the child. There would be a few items placed in front of the child, like some Lakshmi, Bhagavad Gita, uh, maybe a few other items. Um, and we would place the child in front of these items and see where the child goes. If he goes for the Lakshmi, that means he might become a businessman. If he goes for the book, and it means he might become a preacher or a devotee of the Lord, something like that. And then there's the first haircut called Mundan that happens between the age of uh, one and three years. Uh, again, it's a very important occasion um, which takes place in order to, it's a samskar. It's an important samskar, one of the important samskars. And again, typically um, a ceremony can take place at the mandir. Um, if possible, the, the pujari can help cut the hair of the child. Uh, yagya is performed as well. Um, so. These are the uh, ceremonies, five ceremonies, which uh, can uh, take place after the birth of the child. So we did the preconception, now we did the conception and after that. And then Upanaya uh, Samskar is the sacred thread Samskar. This ceremony marks a boy's official acceptance into his Varna. At this point, he becomes twice born. So um, this is, especially if there's a qualified guru who gives um, this initiation, very important. Everyone has a first biological birth, but when a young man seeks his spiritual identity, he symbolically accepts a spiritual teacher as father and the Vedas as mother. He may also receive a new spiritual name. So sometimes at this time, new name may be given. And this can happen at the age of eight or 11, whatever is suitable and is in the custom of the family. At the ceremony, he receives the Janoi, which is a sacred thread, usually worn for his entire life. It is replaced at intervals, but never removed until the new one has been put on. There is a separate samskar marking the beginning of education, but nowadays uh, the two samskars are often combined. Upanaya means sitting close by, referring to the boys taking shelter of a guru, spiritual teacher. So this is uh, Upanaya initiation. Traditionally, he would move away from home to the teacher's ashram called the guru. That doesn't happen so much. And perhaps in this age of Kali Yuga, it is better that the child is looked after at home by the parents um, going to school during the day and coming back home at night. Because in Kali Yuga, um, all sorts of things can happen which are unsavory. And it's better if the children are given full protection. Um, And I would say, generally speaking, the parents have the um, interest of the child as their top priority. So if they're at home and they're looked after, they're cared for, they're loved. If they're sent outside into a gurukul, and unfortunately the gurukul does not have savory 
or they have unfortunately unsavory teachers or administrators, then there can be all sorts of problems and issues that can take place. Better if the children stay home. Um, I think in South Bharat, this tradition of going to the Guruku is still quite prominent, uh, where the teachers then give them uh, spiritual education in the Vedas. And I think if, as long as there's a really strong network of protection of the children, it's fine. But without that strong protection for the children, very dangerous to go down this route of Guruku. The emphasis of Gurukul was on the study of Vedas and development of character. It, even family, even members of the royal family were trained to live simply without luxury or sense gratification in order to keep their minds pure and unspoiled. When later married, they would remain attached to the spiritual values they imbibed during their school days. The ceremony itself involves shaving the head, bathing, wearing new clothes. So this is two of our wonderful devotees. Um, this is Katan and Katit, and they are children of um, Punna Mataji. And uh, this year, last year, they went to um, Gujarat and they undertook the Panayas or samskar. And they look so incredible. Uh, look like just like woman there, but you know, hopefully. So that they follow the traditional route. Of course, the children are, are not in Google, they live at home and they go to standard school. The boy, the boy may also beg arms from his mother and other relatives. There is a haven and the investiture of the sacred thread. The boys then hear the Gayatri mantra from their guru or the priest who, will, who may give them a spiritual name to signify the second birth. Thereafter, the boy will chant this prayer, the Gayatri mantra three times a day at dawn, at noon, at dusk. That's usually what happens. The boy takes vows to study the Vedas, serves his teachers and follows certain vows, including celibacy. And then the ceremony is concluded by offering dakshina to the teacher. This is a standard. Uh, and again, it's followed in India quite uh, a lot. So very, very interesting samskar. The viva samskar, marriage, perhaps the most important samskar. A couple would stay together for, for life or until the husband took the path of renunciation. Divorce was not allowed. In fact, in the Vedic, uh, you know, in the Sanskrit, there is no such name as divorce. And those who left their partners were often ostracized from society. Matches between the couples were usually arranged by the elders and based on astrological principles, despite modern attitudes towards this practice, it seems that these marriages worked relatively well. So the arranged marriage, if you like. Marriage is usually between members of the same Varna. So the Brahm marry Brahm, Shatya marry Shatya, Vesh marry Vesh, Shudra marry Shudra. And the same Jati, the occupational sub. Scripture approves of women accepting a partner from a higher one, but the opposite was shunned. Until more recently, women were often married very early to protect their chastity and because women were considered to mature more quickly than young men. But it's not so much the tradition now. Sometimes in Bath, you see, you do hear about instances where the children are married at 13 or 14, but really it's practice that uh, probably is not such a good idea nowadays. The giving of a dowry at, as a symbol of the father's affection to his, his daughter is an ancient practice, apparently going back at least to the time of Lord Krishna. At that time, the wealth remained the bride's personal property. But because of more recent wide abuse, the Indian government declared the dowry system 
illegal in 1961. It is, it was badly, badly misused. But actually the properties that belongs to the daughter is for her security, just in case something that happens. The ancient elaborate and often lengthy ceremony, the viva, samskar, is usually performed by the Brahmin priests. There is much regional and denominational variation, but certain features are common. So, depending on, you know, whether you're in the south, north, east, west of India, the ceremony may be different. So, Gujarati celebrate differently, perhaps, from the Hindus and, well, or Hindu Punjabis, etc. Anyway, but there are certain things which are common. Welcoming the bridegroom, exchanging of the garlands, the daughter is given, the hand of the daughter is given in marriage by the father. Sacred fire sacrifice ceremony takes place, holding of hands, circumambulation of the sacred fire, because the fire acts as a witness to the vows that are being made. Marking the bride's hair parting with kumkum, groom putting a mangal sutra on the bride taking the seven steps together. This is where the couple reinforce their uh, commitment to each other, tying the knot, the garments of bride and the groom, and receiving the elders' blessings. So these are all very important, exchanging presents, of course. It's a very happy occasion, of course, uh, but a very important samskar to be done in a nice way as best as possible. And then we have Antim Sanskar, the last for the rights for the dead. After marriage, most couples spend the rest of their lives as householders. After children have left home, there's gradually a period of retirement from active life and an increased dedication to spiritual practices. This corresponds to the third stage of life, Vanaprastha, which these days is rarely adopted and certainly followed less rigorously. A few men still take sannyas and leave home, preparing for inevitable death. In one sense, the whole of life with its various stages and samskars is a preparation for death and beyond. That's the one thing that's certain. In, uh, well, there's two things certain in life, taxes and death. But death is a guarantee. <laughs> Taxes one can try to avoid. <laughs> the funeral rites are almost universally performed and follow similar patterns. Most Hindus cremate their dead. So, unless um, the exceptions are small children who die and uh, saints who are, have become fully uh, God realized, their bodies are considered pure and thus are buried as opposed to burned, cremated. The rationale is burning and enables the departed soul to abandon attachment for its previous body and move swiftly forward to the next chapter of life. Few new, few new ceremonies should therefore be performed as soon as possible. By dusk or by dawn, whichever occurs first. So in Bharat, this happens quite a lot. Somebody dies and in the morning they're buried, they're burned, they're cremated by the evening. Or somebody dies in the evening, they're cremated early in the morning. Which is the best, best way to do it. Therefore in Bharat, a funeral takes place within hours of death. Regulation elsewhere means it may take much longer. The funeral ceremony the body is washed by relatives dressed in fresh clothes and protect with flowers. So a fresh set of clothes are put on the body with some garland. A few drops of Ganga water are placed in the water, in the mouth. Tulsi leaves are also placed on the lips. And often Tulsi twigs will be put in the coffin. The corpse is then carried on a stretcher to the cremation ground. So this is in India. Here is different. But there they would uh, have, we experienced this when our spiritual master passed away. Um, back to the spiritual world. 
uh, he was taken on this stretcher to the cremation ground, accompanied by Kirtan, the chanting of Ram Nam Satya Hai. The name of Ram is true. The eldest son lights the funeral pyre. As part of the ceremony, a priest or relative recites appropriate verses from the scripture. Usually three days later, the eldest son will collect the ashes and place them in the Ganga or other sacred rivers. In the UK, relatives may travel to Bharat for this purpose, although some are now using the Thames. <laughs> yes, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Prabhuji and all the devotees. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You said something just now, the funeral service. Um, I'm talking about India, not here. Yeah. Is, is, is in India still uh, uh, people using uh, uh, the wood to uh, burn yes. the body? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and is it still taking, as you said, like three days to burn or longer? Less. It can be uh, within the day or the next day. And do they keep, do they still keep putting more wood? No, no, no. So the, the fire, the, uh, fire uh, is only lit once and it just it keeps it going. And then after three days, it, it usually burns itself out and then all the ashes are collected in a, uh, in a pot. All right, all right. So it takes nearly three days, yeah? Yes. Okay. It can be less because too much is within two hours. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. No, I, I thought so. I said um, because, that, because in this country it's done electric. That's why. Yeah, yeah, it's done differently. Yeah. But I think now there was talk of some open uh, uh, cremations taking place, but I don't know if it's actually happened yet. All right. Okay, thank you. But, um, they, they still uh, collect the ashes for you and then give it to you later. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Carry you. on, please. Carry on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, in the name, yes. Um, yes, you know, in Mauritius, the oh, yeah. practice is the same. He, right. When the people he has right. already left his body on the other day, his or her uh, burned hmm. remaining are hmm. being collected hmm. and, and uh, put it in the sea. Right. It, it is believed that it is Ganga. You know, Mauritius is so small. Uh, yeah. So people, we, I myself, when my father died mm. in the, the second day, as well as my mother, and my mother was saying, no, do, do, do not uh, burn me. But you know, it is against the ritual. Our ritual is, we must burn. So right. we did it, and it was very, I think, so it is right. okay. Yes. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Sitaram Yes, there's also a period of mourning extending to about 13 days after the funeral, depending on the Varna, whether one is Brahman, Vesh, or Kshatriya, and other considerations. During this time, the family is in mourning. So they're considered impure. The emotional state is not good state. That's why. They will not attend religious functions or eat certain foods like sweets. Yeah. But if one is doing seva, if you have, for example, murtis at home, that seva should not stop. And one should try to remain fixed, calm, not get too emotional. The reason why uh, this period of mourning is there is to stop the uh, uh, the emotional the condition interfering with the seva. That's the reason. It is a period for giving vent to one's grief so that one can live unhindered by unreleased emotions. Significantly though, these rites are more for the benefit of the deceased 
than for the bereaved. <laughs> They're essential to ensure the smooth passage of the soul to a better level of ex existence. So 13 days equivalent to our, our 13 months of the year, mm. uh, parity of months. It mm. is how long the soul takes to get to its uh, mm. destination. Mm -hmm. Good point. And in respect of those 13 months, the family leaves food and water for the soul as the soul needs these before reaching its final destination within those 13 months, days. Oh, sorry, days, yeah. Most essential is the Shrad ceremony performed on the first anniversary of death. Prashad often bowls of cooked rice are offered to the Lord and in turn to the departed soul. So that's the... Uh, Starts. There are a lot more, so but we've just covered the main, and these are ones which really we, we need to uh, be aware. Yeah, try to follow, because it these are this will create impressions in our mind which will stay. These are positive spiritual subscars impressions which will help the soul. Otherwise, we have so many crazy subscars in our head crazy impressions from the past, our actions in the past. And they've been deeply ingrained into our mind. So we have to try to reduce uh, the impact of, of, of those, some, those impressions. So any questions, any comments? Right, uh, one question from me. Uh, you said something about the we don't do any religious thing in the house, is that right? So like in, I don't know about others, but in our Gujarati, mm. they say that we don't, uh, we close the mandir, uh, mandir the, the doors of, uh, not the doors, the curtains, mm. and we won't do any puja, mm. but we still read the Bhagavad, mm. where uh, we have got the picture of the, uh, the the person who passed away and we do the are there uh, uh, in front of the the person who passed away and all the garlands everything and one one picture is of Ganesh and one picture is of uh, Siv Bhagwan and all thirteen days we'll do the are there and we'll read the small Bhagavad in front of that uh, uh, Devotee who is passed away but. We won't do anything, we won't touch anything in the temple. And uh, they, I don't know, but in Gujarati we say, karma uh, suche, not pitru, these other words, sutak. Sutak, sutak. We say in Gujarati sutak, that means uh, we can't do puja in the house. After 13 days, everything finished. Then on 15th day, we all have like proper shower, clean all the, um, sorry, even the bed sheet and things like that, we change it. And then you do the diya again. Yes. That sounds right. That kind of thing is said because- Yeah. You, 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 you. Okay. That's why you don't do any puja or anything in front of the deities. Yes, uh, it's to protect, uh, in like, it might be that one starts blaming God. Ah, you know, your fault that my loved one has gone. So that impurity of mind, that emotional state may be so contaminated, then that's why it is recommended to stop the service. Uh, but if, Ideally, if one has deities, one should continue the same. Seva shouldn't stop. So the, we have to get our mental uh, emotions in the right place so that we are not uh, or grieving so, so much that the service has no meaning. So but service is always important. Service is the first priority. 
Anybody else? Hey, Krishna, Krishna, Karuna. Um, just want to share. Um, I, we had a very old uh, um, pundit here in Mauritius when mm -hmm. I was expecting my baby. So he conducted all the sanskar for them. So wow. he had so and shared books and uh, the rituals he was doing is wonderful. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, he was from Banaras and he was living in Mauritius for quite some years. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's wonderful what he was doing. I've never seen that. And yeah, here yeah, the the pundit the they don't learn as mm -hmm. much as he did. So mm -hmm. they don't know all these rituals as it should be done. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's very long, very, very uh, many preparations to be done and uh, so many things we're doing, yeah. And this very is before nice. the child's birth, huh? Uh, before and after also. Oh, very good. Excellent. Yeah, all, all uh, the Jat Karma, the, every, all, all the Sanskar, all the seven Sanskar. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very rare to find someone like that. Yeah, very rare. I've never seen that. Yeah. Fortunately for us, he was here and... Yeah. Um, we was we were quite close to him. So when he told us that we should be doing all this, we say, yeah, why not? We should be doing so. Wow. We did it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's superb. Now, thank you for sharing that. And uh, mm. you know, one of the things that uh, we are hoping to have is a priest like that. We found one. Oh. We found one. Um, mm -hmm. But it's always hard to get them from bothered to hear, you know, because yeah. they have families, there's all sorts of visa issues, mm. but we are, we have identified one such person who is very, very familiar with all the different uh, rituals and, you know, the meaning behind it as well. They, they understand uh, why to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not just a ritual. Once, we, once we asked him, how is it that uh, he has so many books and he knew all these rituals and all. And then he said that just like you go to primary, secondary, mm. tertiary education and you go up to PhD and all, mm. but he did all that. Mm. It's not only one year or two years learning how to do rituals. It's years after years learning and learning. Very good, very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lifetime of learning. Actually. Yeah, he, he had a very vast knowledge of all the mm. rituals and everything. He, and the books he was using, we never seen them mm. again. It's so wonderful what he was doing. So, right. The, um, yeah, similar with this fellow, uh, he's got. Um, he he studied quite a few years yeah. again. Mm. Uh, I think in the South as well, he's saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, trying to learn all these different things. Yeah. Yeah, even the 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 Pujaris coming from the south of Bharat here in Mauritius, they also they you know have learned quite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's uh, see what happens. If we find such a person here, or if he comes over, we shall be doing we shall be recording a lot of what he does so that it's there for oh, nice. Fortunately, we didn't have the uh, yes. tools, the cameras, and yes. maybe we, we must have some, but let's see whether it is there itself. Yeah, yeah. We have pictures, yeah, but not uh, videos, no. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I'm hoping, I mean, we're developing this library, well, we're going to develop this library within our website. With all the classes, mm -hmm. but it will also include um, you know, these some scars and how to do them properly. That'll be really interesting. So, yeah. Once he told us that there was an American woman that he came uh, to know all about the sanskaras and everything. And uh, when she passed away, she uh, before she passed away, she asked her, her son 
mm. to perform all these sanskaras after her death. Mm. So she, he did it. And uh, he did it through the, the Pandit that he was here. Right. And uh, his son was in Bharat. So oh. um, the, the lady's son went to Bharat and he performed all the rituals after her death. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. A, a person who, who never can, have mm. never done anything, uh, the sanskaras, anything, but she read about it. She she mm. just wanted to to do all these after her death. So her son did it. Yeah. I think it's very important that we make provision for that. Something which I've been giving a little thought to uh, that you know, we need to sort of train our children. This is what please try to do this and give them that uh, information how to do and what to do. That'd be good if it's possible. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's important. It's important. Thank you, Papu. Yeah. Do what we can while we can. Thank you for sharing that. It's really important, actually, Karuna. Um, I, yes. I'm so, yeah. sorry. I'm just uh, generally telling. I mean, the Karuna been really nice. It is given a lot of sanskar, and then mm. we have to give it to our children. But it is difficult these days if they don't understand. We can't tell anything. Mm. Mm. We can't. We, I'm talking openly. I mean. Yeah, we can't. Uh, we, 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 with my mother-in-law and my, my, my father-in-law and my parents, what we, what they teach us, if we tell them, they said, no, it, it's not now the same. If we say you, have to, you can't do anything for 13 days or you have to do this, you have to do that, they won't, they said, no, just one day and finish. Yeah, they won't follow it. I think if we try yeah. and explain why. No, yeah, they keep asking. If we, even if we tell them the reason, it's it won't important. go in their, it won't go in their head. No. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it, it is. is. Uh, so I'm talking about nowadays the generation. Yeah. And um, giving a sanskar to children, bringing up them, everything fine, but as the yeah, Western culture influence. is changing. Yeah, yeah, all the Western style. Oh, go and drink, and that's it. It's finished. <laughs> yes. Sorry. It is true. It is very true, and we have to try to reverse that trend because you know, from this Western culture of uh, drinking, eating, satisfaction will not be there. And at some point, there will be this oh, require need for further enlightenment in knowledge. That's what we want to make available. Yeah, that's what we want to make available. But I mean, I've got my grandchildren. They won't believe in it. Yeah. yeah. That's what my daughter says. I said, you make to, you have to make them. I give them, a, yeah, give them the option. Yeah, the knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. And you're very, very right. It's in this day and age, uh, very challenging situation. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Right. That's fine. Thank you. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but I talked openly. No, yes, I understand. I understand. Thank you. It is correct. What you're saying is correct. It is. It is challenging. Even within the devotee community, it's challenging. Let alone outside of that community. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jesse Krishna. Yes, uh, thank you.